For our guests and our visitors here this morning, I like to start my sermons off with something a little bit lighthearted. And I've been here for over a year, so you may notice I'm beginning to repeat some jokes, but I've got a brand new one this morning. I heard about this lady who came to her Lutheran pastor and said that her dog, Teddy, passed away. And she explained to this Lutheran pastor that Teddy was, she was the best dog. Teddy was loyal, he was loving, he was protective, and this lady, she was just so certain that Teddy would be <coughs> welcomed into heaven by God. And so she asked her Lutheran pastor whether or not he would perform a funeral for her dog, Teddy. Well, this Lutheran pastor, he was old school Lutheran pastor. He knew his theology and he shook his head and said, I've never done a funeral for a pet in the past. I'm not starting now. He flat out refused her. She then said, well, would you at least do me a small favor? You know, I'm trying to think of maybe someone else who might do the service for Teddy. This Lutheran pastor then said, well, go to the Methodist pastor. You know, the Methodists are a little bit more easy going, a little bit more lackadaisical. Maybe the Methodist pastor will do the service. A lady was getting ready to leave when she asked uh, the Lutheran yeah. pastor one last favor. What do you think is an appropriate fee to do a funeral for a dog? $300, $400, $500? $500. This, the Lutheran pastor's eyes got wide and said, you didn't mention that Teddy was a German shepherd. Teddy must be a Lutheran dog. I'll be glad to do it. <laughs> Though he 
talks about you know, it's supposed to be everywhere, but this faith is supposed to be a united faith. In fact, in John 17, 21, Jesus praying to God, prays that we as Christians, we as followers be one. Just as the Father is one with the Son, we are supposed to be united in this faith. Now at this, I think we're doing pretty good at spreading it across the globe, spreading the faith to all the corners. However, at this, this oneness, I think we fall short, frankly. Um, I've seen statistics on the number of different denominations that there are in the world right now. And this was from about five years ago, so it's probably even more, but something like 33,000 different denominations right now. And by denominations, I mean, you know, the ELCA is one denomination. Missouri Synod is the second denomination. 33,000 different denominations all saying, you know, we've, we've got the truth. We know how to follow God. And, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not united. In some ways we are, but in many, many ways we are disorganized um, when it comes to promoting and then celebrating the gospel and the truth. And so if that is something that I think we still have work to do. The second thing is I'm watching these Olympics just to see all the different types of skill that go into the, the different events. Boy, there's a lot of strange events, isn't there? Sometimes you turn on the TV and you just marvel and you think, how is that an Olympic sport? Um, and there's some that, you know, there's just an amazing athlete. And I know we've got one of our own competing at the games right now. Jordan Larson, born and raised right here at Redeemer. And Hooper went to Logan View. And as I watched what she does, what an athlete. For her to do what she does at that scale, the Olympic Games, she's got to be fast. She's got to be agile. She's got to be able to jump through the roof. She's got to be powerful. She's got to be really the complete athlete. And many of the games, that's what you need. But then, you know, there's some events, synchronized swimming. You know, what type of skill do you think these people need? I certainly couldn't do it. Probably a lot of patience, a lot of perseverance, maybe forgiving your teammates when they're going like this, they're supposed to be going like that. I don't know what it is, but it's definitely a skill. Hill, it's definitely something that they have that I don't have. The other event, I was watching table tennis. I love to watch table tennis. It is truly remarkable how fast that ping pong ball goes back and forth. And I think it's reaction time. Being able to see it and react to it in a split second. All these different skills. One more kind of bizarre one. Did you know that speed walking is an Olympic sport? You heard that right. Speed walking. Now, the key with speed walking is going as fast as you can, but you must maintain at least one foot on the ground at every single moment. And they've got officials watching this, getting down. And they see both of your feet going up at the same time. You're disqualified. Now, what type of skill do you think it takes to be a speed walker? And for that, I'm not sure either. Probably good thighs, probably good calves, probably different muscles than you know the hundred meter dash takes. That's for sure. But you know, specific talents, specific abilities that these people have. Now, what's the connection that we have? along with these different talents and these different abilities. If you pull open your, your bulletin with me real quick, our second lesson talks about gifts that God gives to people. So page five in your bulletin, beginning in verse 11, where God's word, his holy scripture, talks about gifts that he has given to you. And the key here is that the gifts that God gives to me are different than the gifts that he has given to you. And he's, it's different than the gifts that he's given to your spouse as well. Verse 11 tells us, the gifts he gave, speaking about God, were that some would be apostles, some would be prophets, 
Some would, some would be evangelists. Some would be pastors. Some would be teachers. And I think we could keep on going. You know, if God's word would be written today, we'd say some would be farmers. You know, some would be janitors. Uh, some would be, you know, you name it. God has given each of us different gifts, different abilities. And here is why. Verse 12 gives us the why. Why all these different gifts? The why is to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is what we are called to do in this world. We're called to make this world a better place. We're called to strengthen our families. We're called to grow food for the world. You name it. Whatever gift God has given to you is a very specific gift. And it's intended for you to use to make this world a better place. Lastly, one of the, the successful athletes, I guess, was this gymnastic uh, woman. Her name is Suni Lee. Uh, she's an American. And as I watched her compete, this is probably one of the five days ago or so, uh, Suni Lee, you watch what she does in gymnastics. And it's just amazing. Flying up on those bars, flipping upside down, tumbling in the floor exercises, on the rings, uh, you name it, she does it all. In fact, she won the all-around competition Olympic gold, which means that she had to be good at pretty much everything. If she had a weakness, she wasn't going to win the gold. As I look at it, she's 18 years old. How much work? How many hours do you think she has put in her life training for this moment? A thousand? Two thousand? That's probably doesn't even begin to get at the, the work and the time that she put into becoming this gold medal winning Olympic uh, medalist. She put the time, she put the effort. Friends in Christ, we are called to do the same. But we're not called to be a gymnast. We're not called to compete in Tokyo, Japan. But we are called to work at our faith. Did you know that? Sometimes I think we think of faith as a noun. You have faith, and it's good to have faith. You have faith in your heart, and that is what makes you right in God's eyes. That's what gets you into heaven. I have faith, and that's good. It's something we have. We don't often think of faith being a verb, though. And I think it is. I think it's both a noun and a verb. Because faith is meant to lead us to do things. Faith is meant to, to, to get us out into the world. More than anything else, faith is, is meant to be grown. It's meant to be nurtured. We're meant to work at this. We're not just meant to be okay with the place that we are with God. We're meant to each and every day grow this faith. Redeemer Luther, I'm going to challenge you. I don't know how often I challenge you, but I like to challenge you every once in a while. You'll notice in your bulletin, there is an orange <coughs> insert. We're going to try something brand new here at Redeemer Lutheran Church. We're going to try a Bible study. But this is a completely different Bible study than anything you may have tried in the past. This is a small groups Bible study. Or I hope and pray we have multiple small groups formed right here at Redeemer Lutheran Church. We'll all be studying the same topic. The topic is love does. God is Bob God. He's just an amazing person. He talks about his life and makes connections with the faith. But the challenge I have for you, if you've never tried a Bible study before, I get that. There's you know, most Christians will never join a Bible study, and there's a lot of different reasons. You know, we might not have the time. A man problem is I don't like to talk that much, especially talk about faith. I'm challenging you. Faith is a verb. We're called to grow this faith. We're called to develop this faith. And so these small groups be five weeks. Five week commitment. I'm not asking you to join a, a Bible study that never ends. There's an end date. This is five weeks. I need some of you to step up and say, I'm willing to host a small group in my home. Because 
That's where most of our small groups will meet for five weeks in homes. And so if you're a good host, then you would be welcoming to have people into your homes to do these small groups. Check off that you're willing to volunteer to be a host. Now, there will be a training that will be coming up. You're not just winging this. So go through training. So that's first. If you're willing to do that, I love you. That's, that's fantastic. We need hosts. But if you're just not able to do that, not willing to do that, we need people to participate. So I'm challenging you. Will you take up this challenge? Will you participate in this small group that we've got coming up in just a few weeks? It kickstarts Rally Sunday, August 22nd. If you are, two different options. If you already think you've got a group of friends here at church that you're probably going to group up with, that's great. Check off the, you know, I'm going to come up with my own group. If you don't have a group already in mind but you'd like to participate, at the bottom there. I want to do this. I accept the challenge, Pastor, but I don't know the best group for me, so check that bottom one, and I'll find a good group for you to join. Accept this challenge.